and go. Um, uh, we're wondering how um, did Reebok and CrossFit first pair up? How did that partnership? Yeah, it's a really uh, cool story. A couple of years ago, we were researching all the different avenues of fitness and training. And do we want to get into the gym chain business? Do we want to, you know, relaunch things like step aerobics? And one day we were in a meeting room, Metal Tool was leading a meeting. And we looked out the window, and there were four or five of our employees doing this crazy workout on the track inside of our headquarters and uh, we walked down and asked them what they were doing and they said we're doing CrossFit. So from that day on we started researching what CrossFit was. Matt himself actually went to CrossFit New England, which is a local box and it's joined and then he started having us all go with him and all of a sudden there were you know, half a dozen to a dozen people you know, doing CrossFit and from there Kind of the love affair started so that the 2010 CrossFit Games, we sent Chad Whitman, who works on our team, out here to find Greg Glassman and you know, ask him for a personal meeting with Matt. And about a month later, after the games, he came out, we met. It was an instant love affair. Uh, our, our brands have the same kind of goals and unique bonds and what we're trying to do for the world through fitness. And, uh, Literally within 90 days, we you know, formed a partnership and here we are two years later celebrating the 2012 games. I have a question I, I wasn't supposed to ask, but I'm going to ask. Do you think, because you started CrossFit, when did you start CrossFit yourself? I started CrossFit, uh, well, I guess that would be 2010, the summer of 2010. That's would, when this whole thing started. Would you say, if somebody's never done it before, I would be one of them, yeah. but would you say that there's, like, CrossFit is truly accessible to everybody? No question. I okay. get that question every day, so it's a really, really? good question. I think when people see things like the games, they see the elite athlete and they think, I could never be like Rich Roney or Amy or any of these you know, just absolutely super fit people. But the reality is that most of the people that work out in a CrossFit box are just like everyday people. You know, they're soccer moms, they're lawyers, they're you know, kids, or whatever it might be. and. I think the thing is that even I, I had it, I had this kind of trepidation at first. Because I'm like, wow, that looks really hard. But like I said this morning, everything that's worth doing is hard. But the reward and the uh, empowerment, especially for women, who would have ever thought I'd lift a barbell over your head? And, you know, I went to Korea a couple of uh, months ago. And even in Korea, where they don't even know what barbells are, you know, like, a woman lifts a barbell over her head, she did it, and she was hooked. So it, it is for everyone. The, the great thing about CrossFit is that you can literally be doing one of these workouts, you'd just be doing it at your own level. If, if they're lifting 225 pounds, you could do it with a PVC pipe that weighs 9 ounces. Mm -hmm. You're doing the same range of motion, your box jump might not be 24 inches, it might only be a plate, which is 3 inches. And then the progression is where the scalability comes in. So it's truly accessible to anyone who wants to do it. My 10 and 12 year old kids do it, I hmm. do it, I have my sister who's 50 years old doing it, and we have people that are 70 years old doing CrossFit and doing CrossFit. So we see it every day. It's great. Cool. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about um, your employees and how excited they were to get into the CrossFit um, as compared to before you were involved with CrossFit, the fitness levels of everyone? Yeah, sure. I mean, it was. You saw, we showed a video earlier today where in May of 2011 we had a fitness day and we did an all-employee Reebok CrossFit Games and there was some trepidation, the same thing, the, the accessibility is it good for me, can I do it? But you know, we had a lot of people that worked out at Reebok then, but no one truly had like their, you know, you get passionate about a sport, they were like, well I like to walk but I kind of love it, I like right. to swim, in, but it, it's really not my passion. I don't wake up every day saying I want to spin or I want to do <laughs> some, some people do, but you know, some people are runners and they love the adrenaline or the, or the solitude or whatever might be the benefit of running. But we had a lot of people just going, you know, fitness really isn't that exciting. Uh, and so we did the event, I think it was May 17, 2011, I'll never forget it. Um, we had 750 employees out of the 1,100 come out. The, the rest of them were looking out the windows or standing there and just checking it out. And we had all of them do a CrossFit workout together. And from that day on, the magic just happened. 
people fell, whether they fell in love with CrossFit and they're still doing it today, and we have over 450 regular uh, people attending a CrossFit walk at least twice a, day, a week now. We also have over 800 of the 1,100 employees working out either in the CrossFit box or in the traditional gym that we have or in the hall of facilities that we have. The participation level has gone through the roof. Over a 40% increase in the activation rate. Physically, we've lost over 5,000 pounds. You know, just from the day you started to the today, what do you weigh? We did a survey a couple, a couple weeks ago, and it was um, well over 5,000 pounds. And, but more, more importantly, the, the mental transformation, the social transformation, mm -hmm. I said it earlier today, people who used to just pass each other by in the hallway, hey, how you doing, but no interaction, are stopping. How was your workout? Isn't this great? They're talking about the products, you know, designers and product managers talking in the hallway about the products they made. I worked out the new, we bought CrossFit Nano or whatever it was, and I noticed that we could change this, or you know, I noticed the sleeve's a little bit short and we need to lengthen it, or whatever it might be, and you're literally, it's like a mini human performance lab. Uh -huh. And uh, so, and now families, we have Saturday, we bought CrossFit Kids. People are coming in, doing a workout, and their kids do a workout and hang out for three or four hours on a Saturday morning. It really has transformed the company. And, and the good thing is, even if you don't do CrossFit, it's gotten people doing the aerobics classes. Because we've mm -hmm. added instructors for dance. You know, we've got Zumba classes going. We've got P90X classes going. So it's, it's really, really good. At first, I have one last question, and then we can let others in. But um, at first, when you said, Physically, we've lost 500. I thought you were going to say 500 people. We've lost 500 people. Like, I thought they were dead, and that was like a good thing. Um, but my question is I think that you guys, we obviously, we love the sport. We, I'm going to join a box when I get back. But, you know, people also see the products, the apparel that you're making, and they're like, wow, that's awesome. And I'm thinking about people that know nothing about CrossFit, that maybe see a commercial, they see the games. Or, or maybe they've just casually heard about it. Then they see your products and they're buying it. Do you, does Reebok intend to try to educate that consumer that's buying your products going, well, I know that I'm technically buying like CrossFit stuff, but I'd like to get started. Do you, is that like a plan to, to educate it or is it? No, there's no question. I mean, we, right down from the package of the hang tags and the box liner or you know, the postcard that you may put inside the, the, the box or a pair of shoes explaining the functional aspect of not only the product, but why it's built the way it is. Mm -hmm. Online, digitally, whether you go to our website and you click on a product and you want to find out more, we're trying to educate them on not only why uh, the shoe is built around these functional movements, but why the functional movements are important, mm -hmm. and why they're going to benefit you. And then of course, we want as many people as possible to do CrossFit, but you don't have to do CrossFit to wear a CrossFit our product, a CrossFit product. You could be doing functional training of your own, so you could be doing a boot camp. You could be, you know, whatever you do to, to stay fit, our products are functional to the point where they'll meet the needs of every activity that you do. Uh, short of if you're going ice skating in the United States. But, uh, but to answer your question, we are, education is very powerful. It's, it's actually something that we need to do to get, get it to the masses to yeah. make sure that they, they understand the, the rationale behind it. And hopefully they find a lot of doing CrossFit. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions from you too? I'm looking at no? My best friend time is four minutes and forty-five seconds. Uh, I just did it about four weeks ago, though, and it was five minutes and forty-one seconds. So uh, it, was a little, it, was a, it was actually slower than my best time. But uh, and clarify that for people that are watching this that have no idea what you just said. <laughs> Because I'm like a newbie, so you said Fran time? Yeah. So Fran's one of the one of the benchmark workouts. Okay. And the benchmark workouts are a, a grouping as a dozen original ones, and now they've added more. Where, and they're all named after ladies. Huh. Um, Fran is 21, 15, and 9 reps of a thruster, which is basically doing a front squat with the bar, and then when you come up, you press it overhead. Mm -hmm. So you do 21 of those and then you do 21 pull-ups. Then you do 15, 15, 9 and 9. Okay. Boom. At the end, that's your Fran time. So 3, to 1, go. Uh, the, I think the fastest time in the world is a minute and 50 something Are seconds. you kidding? Wait, now say your times again. Your number, your time My was... My best, 
I should call it, my best time is 4.45, but my latest, most recent time, I like to blame it on too much work, uh, is about 5 minutes and 41 seconds. But it is an amazing workout because you're getting Olympic weightlifting, gymnast, you know, with the, with the thruster, you're getting gymnastics with the pull-up, and you're getting, your heart rate gets up to about 180 beats a minute. Yeah, and right. what was your time? Uh, it's in the 12s, but still. <laughs> so suffice it to say, mine will probably be an hour the first but, time, but, but that's fine. But it's a perfect example. You yeah. can do it with bands. You can do it with a PVC pipe for your first time. It doesn't really matter what your first yeah. time is, but the the exertion, the move, you move the weight the same amount as everyone else. Yeah. And at the end of it, the train gets the best of everyone. It doesn't matter how fit you are. Even, even uh, Rich and Andy, uh, they, you say, you're going to be Fran, and they kind of cringe. But, uh, so she's not my favorite. Uh, I actually like, I don't, I don't have one quad, but I really like uh, Metcons and you know, triplets where you're going to, you'll do a run for 400 meters, come back in, do something with a weight, mm -hmm. and then maybe do some burpees, which is your own body weight. Right. I really like that, mixing it up so you're not doing one thing, like sitting on a treadmill for 45 minutes and not talking to anyone. You go outside, enjoy the sun, mm -hmm. you run, come in, do, do your thing. I like mixing it up. So with Metcons, it's can't wait to start. I'll keep you guys updated. Well, because I had to film, so we're just not going to